On this week's episode of Comics Controllers, we talk about the TV show Arrow. We also talk about other television properties for DC and Marvel and how they all tie together. And they keep the whole TV thing going. We discuss Xbox One's new original program. All that and more on this episode 19. What happened on that? Welcome back to another episode of Comics Controllers. As always, I'm Kyle, joined by Steven. How's it going? It's going pretty good, Steven. So, what are we going to talk about today? Actually, I have finally caught up on Arrow. You're a uh, liar. Well, okay, caught up as in I started watching it. Okay. Um, and I finished season one. Yeah, you know season uh, two's almost over. So you I know, I know. And, and, and I guess what I mean by caught up is I, I, I got caught up in... The excitement of the show. Um, okay, yeah. I, I've, I've really explain enjoyed your it. lies however you want, Stephen. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Um, no, it, you're correct. I I unfortunately uh, misspoke there. There is a season two, and uh, I'm very eager to start it. But at this well, point, I think I'm going to wait until since I think you or somebody else told me they're episode 18 or something like that now. So it's not. Yeah. It shouldn't be too much longer. Yeah, well, so for people who don't know, what Arrow is, is Arrow is Warner Brothers and DC having done a Green Arrow TV show. And it's hard to figure out if you didn't realize they dropped that one word. Well, it's actually funny because he's not, they don't even call him Arrow or Green Arrow or anything for the entire first season. Yeah, they call him The Hood, right? Or The Vigilante. The Vigilante, yeah. Um, And so what it is is that it's, you know, the origin story of Green Arrow and how Oliver Queen... And it's based on, um, was it Green Arrow Year One or something? It's loosely, very loosely based on Green Arrow oh. Year One. Um, and I, I realized... I, that's a comic I read back when it came out. It's a very good comic. I highly recommend it. And one of the first things I noticed was, of course, that it was written by Andy Diggle. And in the show Arrow, his bodyguard's name is Diggle. He tells him to call him Dig. And he had a brother named Andy who died. And I was like, oh, that's that's cute. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, the premise of the show is that Oliver Queen was a spoiled, rotten brat of a rich kid. Him and his dad went on this, like, private yacht that they owned. They went on, like, a, a cruise Mm -hmm. A storm hit, and the boat capsized, and they were stranded, and Oliver spent five-something, I think about five years. Five years. years. It was five years, yeah. On this island, surviving, and everybody thought he was dead. And then just one day, this boat happens to come near the island, and you know he sets off a signal, and they realize there's somebody there, and he gets rescued. And so it's him coming back to town, and he's now seeking vengeance on all these people in this book that his father had given him. And, I, you know, I think his father kind of explains to him that these are bad people, and that his father explains that he wasn't necessarily a good person either. They're all people who have wronged the city or failed the city. That's failed the city, that's yeah. it. And so, you know, something happened to Oliver on that island, and, and he comes back as a badass, and not a spoiled rotten brat anymore, and he now wants to take care of all these people who have wronged the city. And that's basically what the first season is. It's yeah. him going through this book and just, like, crossing people's names off. And he kills people. It, well, before we get into that, just a quick comparison. Uh, Green Arrow Year One is that entire story. It's just the whole five years he spent on the island. However, the events on the island are almost completely different. Um, what they're doing on the island, the, the ba- what the bad guys are doing on the island is completely different. Who the bad guys are are completely different. Um how Oliver Queen becomes such a badass is pretty pretty different. But both versions of the island story so far are really good. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of characters from DC, not even main characters, but like little side characters that show up in the series. And, and for the most part, it's 
usually just their names. So it's like, oh, I know, I've heard that name. And you look them up, you're like, oh, yeah, that was a DC person in some comic. But they're not, yeah. like, the actual characters. And sometimes it's not even that. Like, with Count Vertigo, they just called him the Count. And uh, I think the drug. That yeah, he, he is uh, selling a drug called Vertigo. Vertigo. And then the Royal Flush Gang episode, which is... Uh, one of my favorite, very minuscule C-list criminal organizations, because they existed in the comic books beforehand, but they really kind of came to prominence, I think, in Batman Beyond, which is like a future version of the Royal Flush Gang. Mm -hmm. But that episode with them was really good. Yeah, and and so there's a there's a lot of drama in the series. So, if you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which we've talked about, <clears throat> Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is very Monster of the Week, kind of <gasps> big superhero type stuff going on, even though they're not really superpower people. But Arrow is a lot darker and more drama-based. I mean, the entire second season is just like one dramatic thing after another. Well, not to, not to put a fine point on this, but it's on the CW. Yeah. And I, I'm not knocking CW programming. I think some of it's really good. Um, I actually recently got hooked into uh, the Tomorrow People, which is a CW program. But almost every CW show within the past like several years has had a couple of things in common. There's always a love triangle. Mm -hmm. There's it's high drama, even if it's really good action. Uh, the Tomorrow People has uh, some amazing action, and Arrow has some of the um, some really just amazing stunt work and stuff that they've done. Is Tomorrow People based off the old Australian TV show called Tomorrow People? Uh, I think it was British. Um, there was a 70s version, and then there was a 90s version that I think the main actors were Australian, but I think the show itself was produced by the BBC. I could be wrong about that. Okay. But this is the third incarnation, and okay. they've, they've kind of drastically changed their origin story in each one, so it's almost like it's three different TV shows. Because in the okay. 70s one, they had like belt buckles that made them teleport. I was just curious because I... I I remember the TV show from the 90s yep. that I watched when I was a kid on Nickelodeon, but I didn't oh. know they had done something new with it. But that's yeah. like the perfect show for the CW to yeah. do overly dramatic teen stuff with. I watched the hell out of that 90s version, and I'm actually enjoying the new version. Um, but to go back to Arrow for a second, like with, what I'm saying is that this, you can still tell the CW kind of element. You can tell their kind of touch on the show, mm -hmm. but it's not in your face like certain things it's not too bad yeah i mean it's not like gossip girl right but i mean there there's that dramatic level and there's like the everybody has some kind of little love thing with them either they're in love with somebody who can't love them or they can't love them for a reason or there's a love triangle with them or something going on and they have like the young person who's the team that they added who she's not part of like the actual dc canon stuff for arrow green arrow but she's been added to it for well, the she, show. Yeah, she is a DC character, but she she's had nothing. A combination of DC characters. Yeah, she had nothing to do with uh, Green Arrow, from what I could tell, until yeah. the New Fifty Two. Um, but like her, they completely, like you said, they her character looks like they mix and match because it's nothing like the actual DC write up for her. Which character are you talking about? Uh, the hacker. Uh, no, you're talking about Felicity. Yeah, I'm talking about Felicity. So there's Which a character in there, Felicity, who yeah. is like. A hacker, and in the comics, she was a like businesswoman. Business she was woman. like this crude businesswoman. And she yeah. didn't even deal with Arrow. She dealt with somebody else. Like she wasn't a Green Arrow. Uh, like I said, character. I think in the New Fifty Two, she kind of becomes like a Justice League kind of deal. So she deals yeah. with a, a lot of them. But yeah. See, I was referring to his sister. His sister. Oh doesn't yeah, exist. yeah. Right. She's actually Sorry. a combination of people. That is true. Yeah. But they added this character of, you know, Oliver uh, Oliver King's or Queen's, I'm sorry, Oliver Queen's sister, Thea Queen, so she's like the young teenager. They kind of can do the teenager type stuff with her. Yeah. And have that kind of drama. It, it, but it doesn't detract. Like, I, I, I don't mind her. She's actually a, a pretty cool character. Towards um, the end of that season, when they introduce Roy, who is, of course, becomes Red Arrow and Arsenal, Arsenal. and all that, um, she becomes a much better character. And, it, and it's not her fault. I'm not blaming the actress in any way. But it was like the writers were like, you know, we really need to give her something better to do. And as soon as they do that, her character picks up immensely. Same. It's just, in the second season, she develops a lot. Like, th this is one of those shows that when it starts out, you could tell they were still trying to figure out what they wanted to do. And they had a hard time writing some of the characters. But as time's gone on, 
the character development's gotten a lot better. Right. The my biggest problem with this show, and I, I know you mentioned this to me, and at the time it wasn't a problem, but it's it's gone on, it's gotten worse. But the island, yeah, that he was on. Every everything relates back to the island somehow. Somehow, the first yeah. two seasons. So, uh, you know, maybe that will change after the second season. But so far, everything always relates back to the island. Like something happened on the island. Actually, I read about three days ago where somebody asked one of the crea- one of the producers or the creator or something like that, and they said, "How many seasons will they be going back to the island?" And the guy's response was, "Well, Oliver Queen was on the island for five years." So you take that however you like, but that makes me think that if the show goes five seasons, then apparently that's how long they want to do island stuff. But I would, I hope that maybe after season two, things don't need to be directly related to the island so much. It, 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 you know, some flashbacks are fine. I, actually, I'm not a flashback fan. Uh, in most television, I think flashbacks get in the way. I think most things that you you do in flashbacks could actually be done in present time with more creative writing. However, this show it, it's kind of part of its stick. So, how would you I, do something up that should be a flashback, not as a flashback, more creative writing? Them just telling you what happened—that's not creative. That's boring. Well, not just simply in telling, but there are ways of showing without actually using, you know, speech. Um, a like great a flashback. I, well, no, that's. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. Not showing how you in that a way. Flashback without doing a flashback. Yeah. I'm really confused. Uh, eventually, you would have to. Um, okay, here's a great example. Take a show like Game of Thrones. Okay. How many flashbacks has Game of Thrones had? None, but they really they everything happens through them telling a story about. Well, this. But that's the happened. thing. Like Game of Thrones has a ton of history before the first episode, but they don't overdo it. A lot of times it's little sparse conversations or like somebody has an item or something from, you know, age long past. So that's kind of more what I'm ge- I'm getting at. Okay, fair enough. For a show like Game of Thrones where it's all about the present, I can give you that. But something like Arrow where like... That's it, what I said. This part, they're stick. Yeah, yeah, they have to do these things. But yeah. they, they do are getting old. Right. And I hope they... And, I will say, in the last couple episodes, there hasn't been as much island stuff. In fact, the last episode might not have had any, if I remember correctly. And eventually, I think that's where they should go. I, you know, the island should become less and less of a, a factor the further you go on. And I know that there's probably, I'm going to guess in Season 2, there's still a story progressing on there as to what actually happened. And they could keep that going. But yeah. the problem with running two parallel stories like that is... I'm sure they think they need to keep it connected to keep it interesting. And I would almost be okay if they decided, um, like there's an episode, spoiler alert, where Oliver Queen gets shot. And so for a huge chunk of that episode, it goes back to the island. And I would be totally okay if they're like, well, we want to develop some of the island storyline. Well, let's give a framework story for why Oliver Queen is having to sit at home and rest or wait. You know, maybe he's doing a stakeout of somebody. So they do almost an entire episode just sitting on the island. I think that'd be fine. But constantly flipping back and forth sometimes, I think, and trying to run two parallel stories, uh, it just, it detracts. It's not, well, it's, and they don't do it in such a way that it's jarring. Like, it's not like, what happened? I don't remember. Because it's all related. It's like, well, yes, this story's going on in the present about this guy that Oliver met on the island. You the story they're then telling you about on the island relates like the second season, the entire, like to me, the first season, the island stuff didn't really relate. The overall story didn't really relate other than this is how Oliver became a badass. Sure. The second season's completely opposite. Like people show up and Oliver recognizes them. It's like, how do you recognize this person? And then there's like an island kind of thing. And it follows the story on the island follows leading up. Like you're trying to figure out like, how do we get to this point now with these people? who Oliver knows from the island, to where they are with him now. Yeah. And it's a lot better done in the second season. So it could be another one of those things where it's like, we didn't really know how to do it properly in the first, but in the second, we've kind of brought it together. That brings up something I totally forgot to ask you, which is a vision question. The girl that he fights several times in the season who has the white wig, she works for the triad. Uh-huh. Is that, what's his name's daughter from no. the island? Okay. Because they focus in one thing on her tattoo, and I couldn't tell like if was they it like wanted a dragon tattoo. I think so. 
Yeah. Or, yeah, some kind of animal tattoo. Oliver has one, too. Ah, okay. But they never explain that that I remember, like, why they both have this tattoo. Like, they explain why Oliver got one, but they don't, you never find anything out about her with it. Yeah. Unless I forgot, which is a good possibility, because sometimes it's in one ear and out the other with me. Yeah. When it comes well, to TV shows. I just, I just wondered, because, and, you know, not to sound, I, I'm legally blind here, so I could never get a good enough look at the woman in the wig to go... Is that her or are these two separate Asian-esque looking women? It's two separate Asian women. Okay. So, um, also, do they ever explain how he has the ties with the Russian mafia? Yes. That's explained okay. in the second season. Good. Because I, I didn't mind it, but I was like, they ha- there has to be a payoff to this. They eventually have to explain how he got this. And, and I think that kind of comes back to the last thing to talk about the island part of this is that the island is ultimately plot device. Yeah. Why did this happen? This never explained. Uh, make an episode about the island that explains it. Done. <laughs> and, That's, and, the Russian Mafia is one of them. And I'm okay with them taking that route, but if they were not going to take that route and not overdo it, it, the island should have been done in season one. Yeah. Or maybe season one should have just been the island. I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm like you, I don't I'm think afraid. that would have been as interesting. Maybe not. Um, but like you, I'm, I'm, I'm really afraid that they're eventually going to get to a point where people are going to get more tired of the island. Or it could go the opposite, where people get so used to it that they don't, you know, think anything about it. It's like, that oh, is possible. Yeah. I think that's kind of where it's going. Like, it's become such a part of the show. Yeah. That, or maybe they'll slowly phase it out where people won't realize it. Like, maybe there'll be more, and yeah. more episodes that have less to do with it. It's with maybe the occasional, almost the entire episode's based on the island. Right. And I'd be, I'd be totally cool with that. that. That would actually probably be my preferred method. So... Um, Along with Arrow, what Arrow's also done is that in the second season, it has Wally West, I think. Isn't it Wally yeah. West? Well, yeah. actually, that was no, Barry, Barry Allen. Allen. That was Barry Sorry. Allen. Yeah. I have so many flashes. Barry Allen. So little time. Yeah. Barry Allen shows up, who's the original Flash. And, um, you know, he actually finds out who Arrow is and... He leaves, but then something happens to him in the show, which, you know, and then you never see him again. It's always kind of referred back to him. And we know now they're doing a Flash TV show. The CW's going to have a Flash show. I have a question. Yeah. Is the Flash going to be as violent as Arrow is? Because if so, I think it might might be good. I don't know. You you mentioned this earlier. I just got to say real quick that Arrow straight up, like, there's one guy he shoots in the eye, and that guy survives. Okay, whatever. But there are so many times dead where... Shot. Yeah. There are so many times where he shoots people in the chest, and then, like, the next scene, the guy, the bad guy will be like, who oh, sent six of my men to the hospital? And I'm just like, no, no, no. Two of those guys are dead, at least. Well, that was a square shot. <laughs> well, you have to remember, too, they're saying that, like, Oliver Queen's, like, this amazing marksman, so maybe yes. he's just hitting them in, like... Non, non-vital areas. Exactly. Yeah. Cause he, but he does kill people. He kills He straight I, murders people in the first couple episodes. and Because yeah. that's why the cops want him so bad. They're like, this dude's a murderer. Well, that's why I had a problem with him and that whole plot line with Huntress. Because he's sitting here like, hey, don't kill. Like, slapping her hand like, bad girl. Don't, don't do that. Don't kill your hugely criminal father. Oh, let me go kill this other guy real quick. Exactly. Because in that three-episode plot line with her or whatever... He straight up kills another person who found out. Yeah, his, but he gets called secret. out. Diggle calls he, him out on that. He does. And, and Felicity, too. Yeah, I think Felicity calls him out, too. You're right. But, like, my thing is, it's really hard for me to take you seriously when you're telling this girl, you know, and I love Huntress as a character. I, I, I think they did a really good job with her, and I like this kind of grittier version of her. Because Huntress does sometimes lean towards That's being actual- much more gray. But that's then, the actual Hunter story. I I mean I know, but in most Batman, she is a good guy. She is, you know, she, that's why she actually. Uh, well, that's how she is now. That's how she yeah. was originally. Well, that's that's what I was saying. I know that she leans a lot of times towards yeah. more of a, a you know, a, a gray. I don't I don't think except in maybe it, depending on how you look at it in um, uh, No Man's Land, she kind of was a bad guy for like a very brief time. But other than that. Because she I got kicked out of Justice League at one point for killing somebody. Oh, did see? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't Batman know. was like, "Get the hell out!" Yeah, but that was my point. <laughs> I really like Huntress, and I like how they portrayed her in this, and I like this—you know—seeing this angle with her. But it was just really weird to have 
you, this version of Oliver Queen no, going, no, stop it, don't do that. And you're like, shut up, dude. You, you have no, you know, if Batman comes up and he wants to say this to her, that's Batman. But you are over here, like, jacking people just because they saw your face. Yeah. But so, in, in mentioning Hunters, too, like, DC is building up, it looks like, their own TV thing. Because not only do they have Flash, but they have Gotham. Yeah. Which is basically, but I don't know, think Gotham's set in the same. It it can't be one because of the time frame, but two also it's on a different network. Oh, okay, so it's it's probably not set, but like with Huntress, and they've also uh, there's also basically Black Canary shown up too. Yeah, they're setting up that they could possibly do another show on CW that would maybe be you know Birds of Prey or something else. I don't know. They haven't announced that. Flash is the only. They one tried that already, man. Come on, let's not yeah. let's not go through that again. But if there's anything we've learned from comic books and with TV and movies, they'll try the same franchise a hundred times yeah. until they actually, make a good one. Yeah, and I'm not knocking it. Birds of Prey was not wretched. It was yeah, just a little. It was a, it was a little ratchety. That's all it I'm was say. Horrible. <laughs> when the clo- the big closing scene of the first season, that's all I saw, and it was done to tattoos. Single at the time, the Russian, the Holy Russian crap. girl group I that called themselves that. that said they were lesbians, but they really weren't lesbians. I, totally I think it was all the things she that. said was that was the closing fight scene was done of that song. I was like, I'm glad I didn't watch any of this show. This show was had to be bad if that was the, how this ended. The first episode of that show was really decent. I like it. It, it got me interested and really it kinda, decent. It, wow, it, it got worse as what, it went the along. The worst description ever for something. It's like, well, how do I look? <laughs> you look really decent. Like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> it's better than decent. It's really decent. But but anyways, back to what I was about, like. We yeah. see, it looks like, you know, they're trying to set up maybe some kind of universe on CW, which that makes sense, because CW's the Warner Rubber Brothers Network, which Warner right. Brothers owns DC. And then, you were telling me that they just announced... The Justice League movie. Exactly. Which right. we know will tie into Superman, or the new Man of Steel and Batman. Yeah. And, and I see what you're saying about them, they're making their own universe. And something that... Um, you know, a friend mentioned to me at one point, and I, I've agreed with, was I think DC has an opportunity to do kind of a reverse of what Marvel has done, where Marvel has made their universe and then is slowly trickling a little bits and pieces of it into their TV stuff. DC could actually take some of their TV stuff and put it into their movie universe so their universe feels even more connected and... I think it would give the TV fans a lot more interest, you know, in these movies. Not that most of them probably weren't going to go see it anyway, but I think it would really boost, like, I know there are some people who have started watching Arrow because it was on the CW. It looks like a new drama. Then they're like, oh, it's about, you know, superheroes. And yeah. can you imagine if, um, I think the guy's name is uh, Stephen Amell, who plays Arrow. Um, it's Stephen spelled correctly, so that's why I remember that. And uh, he could pop up in this Justice League movie. And I'm not saying he'd be a main character. I'm saying, you know, you have like a five or six minute little group scene and he shows up. I, th- I think you'd get a lot of interesting press off of that. It'd do a lot for the show. You know, it there, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity here. And I'm not saying they're going to do it. I'm not... I think yeah. it's a good idea, but... Well, I mean, they could. And I don't it, work for Warner Brothers. I bet they are. I mean, they want to tie them all together. They saw how well it's worked for Marvel. In fact, right. you know, Marvel... You know, they've got all their... All the movies that Marvel Studios do are all part of the same universe. And Agents of yes. S.H.I.E.L.D. is part of that universe. Well, yes. they also just announced that the four Netflix series they're doing, the... Was it Luke Cage? Daredevil. Um, Daredevil. Jessica, Jessica Jones. Jones. And Iron Fist? Iron Fist, yeah. And then there's going to be the, the crossover Defenders. with all of them. Yeah, it's called those the Defenders, are all, right? Yeah. Those are all set in the movie universe. Uh, they're all set in New York City, like Hell's Kitchen, and it's supposed to be a much more street level view, which they haven't done in the universe yeah, yet. Yeah, which which is awesome. I think that was a really good idea. To hey, let's let's look at a part of the Marvel universe that we really have not explored with this franchise yet. Yeah, and I mean they can't this, the way the other characters that they would probably like to do movies with that they could explore that they can't because they don't own them. <laughs> you know, they don't own the rights to their movies. Yeah, stuff, like Spider Man. Yeah, you know. And like I, I still, I know that they've been talking about writing the script forever, and there's, it's not gone anywhere. But they are really pumping for a Stephen Strange movie or something because 
he was mentioned in Captain America. He's been mentioned yep. in Agents of Shield. Yep. And I think he was mentioned in another movie, like just the name Stephen, Stephen Strange or Doctor Strange and stuff like that. So they're really kind of pushing. His to name do with him. was on something, I think. Like in one of the movies, like it, there was a big thing of files, mm-hmm. and if you if you looked at one of the files, his name was because yeah. uh, it said Doctor Stephen Strange. Um, I agree. I know at one point they had uh, supposedly been talking to Viggo Mortensen about playing Doctor Strange, and that apparently mm-hmm. fell through. And then there's a bit, been a big rumor. I'm sure you heard that they, one of the, Mar- oh, okay, his name's like Kevin Feige, I think is how you say it. I apologize if I butchered your name, sir. He's the continuity guy for Marvel. He makes sure that all the Marvel um, movies, TV shows, line up so that they feel like a single universe. His entire job, and he's pretty high up in Marvel Studios, um, is to make sure that everything works together in that universe. So if, you know, if somebody comes up with a new Captain America script, he has to make sure that not only does that script fit with what's been done so far, but it's not going to mess anybody else up. And then any movies that come after that, he has to make sure Captain America 3 is reflected in that. And that sounds like a really tough job. I can't imagine that that's an easy step. But at one point, he was very interested in talking to Johnny Depp about playing Doctor Strange. That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. And I know people trash on Depp sometimes for... He makes some interesting movies, but... Yeah, I mean, he, he plays over-the-top he seems, characters. Yeah. So, but Doctor Strange is over-the-top It's kind of over-the-top. So. And, and Doctor Strange, I think we've discussed this before, is going to be a very different movie when they get around to it. It's not going to be like most of the other... If it ever happens. Yeah, if it ever happens. But I, I hope it does. I like the character. I would yeah. definitely... I haven't read a ton of Doctor Strange. Most of the stuff I read Doctor Strange in is in stuff like Avengers or other group books or where he's the guest star in Spider-Man. But I would love to see more with him. But, yeah. And and but to, to bring it back, you know, we see that DC's kind of got their universe they're starting. And now we know that they've got a movie and we have a chance to see if they're going to try to tie these movies and stuff together with that. And then Marvel... That's what they they're doing, and I wouldn't doubt it. That's DC's goal is to yeah. have the TV shows, and then maybe start trying to tie the movies together with some of the TV shows, just so they can create this giant spanning universe that like Marvel does for its movies and TV stuff. Make it saw- one giant property, yeah. and they have a better chance because they own the rights to all their stuff. They weren't yes. like Marvel did and sold them all off. Yeah, they weren't looking for the quick, easy money. I have an interesting question for you because someone brought it up on Twitter the other day because it's looking like that Zack Snyder is going to direct the new Justice League movie. And someone actually said that they thought that Zack Snyder was a better director than Joss Whedon and that the reason that Whedon, that Avengers was more successful than stuff like Man of Steel and will be more successful probably even still than the Justice League movie is because that Joss Whedon has people like Fagey and uh, all this, you know, support behind them where Warner Brothers, you know, isn't doing the same for their stuff. And I, yeah, I'm just curious. I completely you, agree with that. Okay. Do you Josh think... Joss Whedon's not really, despite what everybody who's a fan of Buffy and all that, like, I love Buffy and all that, but Josh Whedon is very, like, when Josh Whedon does something, it's very obvious. He writes everything the same. Everybody's got quirky little snappy little he, things. He has a style, yeah. Other. He's not a. I mean, that was like one of his first movies he's really directed, anyways, wasn't it? Other than like the original uh, Buffy. Yeah, movie. I was about to say. I mean, he's he directed Serenity. He directed the original Buffy. Yeah. He he was a writer for a really long time. He was just that, doing writing. That movie had four or five other movies behind it, pushing it to make it big. Right. Plus, it had all of Marvel pushing it. That's why. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't a good movie because it was, but that's yeah. why it would do better than the DC movies because you already have people hating on the Batman. Superman, Superman movie yeah. because of um, what's his face Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yeah. So that I, movie's probably going to be hated just because of that. I don't care. Well, I mean, <laughs> that and they just crammed Cyborg also supposedly into that yeah. movie. And now I can't remember his name's like Ray Fisher. He's going to be playing Cyborg, hmm. and I, that's cool. I like Cyborg. I think Cyborg's a great character. But did that movie really need another cameo? Yeah, I know. Um, but th- I guess that brings me to my question: Is most people I know like? who like movies aren't usually big fans of Zack Snyder. You know, a lot of people say they didn't like the way the Watchmen movie was done, which I love the Watchmen movie, but a lot of people didn't like it. And, you know, they say 300 was 
you know, too stylistic or whatever. But I like S- Snyder's directing style. I think it really just depends on the person. Because yeah. a lot of people didn't like Watchmen, not because of the way the movie was directed. They didn't like it because the changes that were made to it. Yeah, a lot of people well. didn't like Superman, not because of the way it was directed, but because Superman killed Broke people. Broke some necks, yeah. And so, Sometimes I don't just think it's... kill Zod, man. Yeah, I don't think it's so much the way he directs. It's so much the things he's done to characters that people don't like. Yeah, I don't that, think he's terrible, but true. I don't really... I couldn't have told you who directed those movies. I didn't know he directed all of them, in fact. Yeah, but, I still keep up with that stuff. It's not really important to yeah. me. He also did Sucker Punch, which a lot of people had problems with. Oh, um, yeah, that movie was terrible. I, it's a great movie from a feminist perspective. How? I, Let's not get into that. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna send mind. you some articles, okay? I probably won't read them, but you can send okay, them. Well, I'll send, okay, whatever. But my point is, I... I I agree, and I, I almost didn't, at first, that comment that I saw caught me off guard, because I think Joss Whedon is a good director, but like you said, he has a very distinct style, but I thought about that, not just, okay, so you had the other movies leading up to Avengers, right, those obviously held, but no denying that, but also, just looking at how some of these people talk about the higher-ups in Marvel Studios, who are so determined to make these movies worse, like Kevin Feige, like some of these other guys. What's his name? Uh, A.V.? A rod, a yeah, rod. rod. Yeah, those guys are putting in massive amounts of work, and I'm not saying that there aren't people just as dedicated at Warner Brothers, but so far it really looks like the the support just isn't there as much for their movie universe, and maybe this will get them off their butts to do it. Yeah, I think just to kind of tie this up, I think Warner Brothers sees it more as we need to put movies out to make money off our property because other comic book movies are coming out we don't want to get left behind. While Marvel sees it as we're creating a whole nother branch of our company. Yeah. See, DC doesn't have to worry. They're owned by some conglomerate. Marvel's not. Well, yeah. no, they are now. They're owned by Disney. <laughs> They're owned by Disney now, yeah. But see, they were doing this before Disney. I, they, I think that's what made Disney they started very it, interested. Yeah, they started it right before Disney, and pretty much like when it when everybody realized, oh, this is actually going to work. That's when Disney swooped down. Yeah, and so I, I I think we could see DC trying to do this, um, but I don't know how well it will work. They've got to really get some actors who want to stick with it and stay with it, and actors that people are okay with. So, yeah. Um, so speaking of TV shows, you sent me a link. Okay, well, b- before we talk about this link... Okay. This is going to be good for our video game side of things. Let's talk about an urban legend. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. Right. Let's go. There's the, there's the old legend that back, I think it was the Atari 2600. Oh, yeah. That Atari made the E.T. tie-in game for the movie. And yeah, it, was it was made the, in like six weeks, right? Yeah, it was like the worst game ever. Like, you would fall in a hole and that was just it. You would, you would die. That's all the game was, was falling yeah. in holes. A bunch of bugs, a lot of um, yeah. miscoded stuff. Yeah, it was just horrible. And so, what Atari ended up doing is they had so many extra copies, like millions of extra copies, they went and buried them out in some landfill in the desert, in like Nevada or Arizona. Supposedly. 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 So, this past weekend... There's this huge article that Microsoft actually dug them up, and they found a bunch of these old copies that have been buried. Like, I don't think they found millions, but they found a, a large amount of them buried out in this desert. It, to prove, I, I don't know. I don't know the exact number, but I did see that they found copies, and I know they're going to keep digging. Apparently, yeah. So when I saw this, my first thought was. This is either confirming that this really happened, or this is some giant publicity stunt. Right. And it's not, these are fake, it's not real. So then today, you linked me the article talking about how, in June, Microsoft is going to start having original premium dramas, comedies, documentaries, animation, unscripted shows, and live events on Xbox Live for the Xbox One. And right. Xbox 360. Yes, and there was a great snore across the land. Yeah, and so my first thought was, we now understand why the Xbox One was being marketed as a TV, yeah. <laughs> because that's really what it was. I don't, I don't care yeah. what Microsoft said. It, it was if, a if entertainment it. center. It's like, hey, you can play games, 
But let me show you what you could really do with this. It can DVR. It can, like, change the channels. It can do this as a play games. Yeah, it probably does that. We haven't really thought of it. Who cares? One of my favorite things is lately people... Yeah, you can people... play your Halos. Yeah. One of my favorite things lately is people have been saying, like, oh, I just got this achievement. And I forget the name of it, but it's like, you watch, like, three episodes of this one random show back-to-back. Achievement. What? It's not achievement. Seriously? They get achievements <laughs> for watching TV? Yes. That's so stupid. I think you have to watch it like a certain way, like through some, certain apps or whatever. Through the Xbox whatever. One. Well, yeah, through the Xbox One, but also like with certain, using certain apps or whatever. But uh, like I, ne- I never thought, I'm not an achievements person. In video games, I don't care about unlocking all the achievements. I don't, you know, if your achievement score's higher than mine, great. You apparently either have more time on your hands or give more of a shit. But for this, the, the TV thing? But... Yeah, but- to go back to the Atari thing with Microsoft, as I'm scrolling through your article that you've sent me, yeah, I come across this thing that's called, a, this is one of the shows that they're going to have, it's called Signal to Noise slash Atari Game Over. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yes. The first, the Signal to Noise is supposed to be like looking into like, uh, I guess you can say, uh, legends about video games and modern technology and stuff like that. The first episode is about the E.T. Atari Atari cartridges. And so, yes, this thing that happened this past weekend was a giant publicity stunt for this show that's going to be on the Xbox One TV network. So you don't think it's at all possible that they could have actually found... No, no, I I think they they might have found it. Yeah, but but then that it was for that show, yeah. Yeah, let me me say that again. It may still be fake. It may still be yeah. real. But either way, the whole thing by doing this and saying coming out with this, if it's real or fake, is just to promote this show, which promotes this Xbox One stuff. Yeah. Well, I agree. Either way, even if they didn't find anything, yeah, or if they planted quote air quotes, you know, the evidence or whatever, it it, it was going to help promote yeah. their show no matter what. Uh, but. Let, let's assume, I just want, just for a quick second, let's assume this is real. Let's just assume that Atari, all those years ago, decided, screw it, we have too many extra copies, just throw them in a landfill. They're sitting in this landfill for how many ever years? Microsoft now, you know, because I know Major Nelson was out there, who's like one of their big um, PR heads or whatever. So he, he finds them. Let's just say that a couple of them work. What do you do with these things now? Like, well, what would you do with all those cartridges? Nothing. No, absolutely nothing. I don't. I'm thinking, I don't think that's really even a big deal. I'm thinking art piece. I'm thinking I could do a sculpture, no. just using ET cartridges. I could do a call. You know what? I could do the same sculpture. I, in fact, I do it once a day in my toilet. I just flush it away. <laughs> it's there's. You were really harsh on ET, sir. The whole art. The whole artistic thing of this is the TV show. Yeah. No, I, I agree. But yeah. I, but, I was just I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, wouldn't it be kind of cool if like they the, some of the cartridges actually still work? Because some of them, from the pictures I saw, they found them in the boxes, like in the original. Mm-hmm. You know, Atari games used to come in those um, cardboard. I mean, it's, it's not boxes. like there aren't copies of ET still out there. That's so true. It's not yeah. even a big deal. Yeah, and I've played. It's not it. like you would want to play it. I just, I just want to point it. that out. I've played it. Yeah. I'd Don't play waste it your kid. time. It's one of those games when you're a kid, you even as a kid when you're stupid and you think every game's great, you still acknowledge that game is terrible. Somebody on my Facebook actually said, I'm really sad I never beat that game when I posted that article, and I really wanted to go, why? Why? Because, yeah, I saw yeah. that. <laughs> why? <laughs> you should be, I mean, you should be happy you never beat it. That means you didn't put a lot of time into it. Yeah. Um, But back to the whole TV thing that Microsoft's doing with the Xbox One. Like I said before, this kind of explains why they put so much emphasis on it, why they made those deals with CBS, why they're making deals with, like, ESPN and all these other, like, companies that deal in, like, TV. Because they're trying to do what Netflix does and have original programming but not be a network. Yeah. And, I mean, they they admitted – they have committed projects and they have um, ones in development. Like, let me go ahead and talk about some of these. So for committed projects, the Halo television series. Which, which I mean, I, I got to say, I'm amazed they got Steven Spielberg. Um, yeah, director and producer. That's that, But they announced that during the... They did, yeah. They announced that a while back. But I don't think they announced it was where it was going to be shown at. I think this is the first, oh, it's going to be only on our thing. I, I think most people figure that, but yeah, I, I mean, who knows. Well, they had the deals with CBS, though. That's what I expected. It was to be some CBS show. 
because I think one of the people they brought over is a former CBS exec. They did, yeah, they did do that. I, I don't know. I, I, I always, and maybe this is just me assuming too much, but I always just figured it was just mm-hmm. going to be on the Xbox. Uh, so let's see what else. They've got a show that's going to be called Every Street United, which is going to be a show that's about, it takes two legendary soccer players, Thierry uh, Henry and Edgar Davids, and they basically are going around the world trying to find like this some kind of soccer prodigy on the street. So and they're I, all over the country. I thought that was a little like, that sounds like an interesting show for people who really like soccer. I thought it was an odd show for them to do. I wasn't expecting mm-hmm. that. But that's, that's good. Just, that that means they're willing to branch out. And, well, it tie, it's going to tie into the World Cups this year. That's why. Ah, uh, there you go. And so it is also. Good job, Microsoft. Always looking yeah. for that in. Tying into the World Cup and also probably tying into like trying to bring in more European purchasers sure. for the Xbox One. Then they're also doing things like uh, there's some they're gonna like show Bonnaroo, which is a music and arts it's a festival. Music festival, yeah, yeah, that will be shown on there. Um, but then they have some shows that are just things in development, like they haven't been confirmed. And one of them is Deadlands, which is based off of an old role playing series. I saw that, yeah. And, and it's based like a Wild West story, but it's like a Wild West story in what if all these crazy ghosts and demons and monsters existed in the West, and when people went out there, it got crazy. I've so, only played Deadlands once, but it's a really cool setting. So yeah, that that could be interesting. Um, then there's, kind of tying it back into comic books, they have a, looks like a mini series called Gun Machine, which is going to be based off of the book that comic writer Warren Ellis did last year, or two years ago now, I think. Yeah, I, I haven't read that book, but anything by Warren Ellis, I'm willing to give a shot. It's pretty good. It's better than his first one he did. Crooked uh, Little first Vane. Crooked Little Vane. I, see, I like that one. I, that one I actually read. I enjoyed it. And then they also have one that's called Winter World that is based off of a series um, from Chuck Dixon and artist Jorge Zafino's graphic novel by the same name. Chuck Dixon's pretty good, too. Yep. So they've got stuff that they're trying to put on there. Um this might this might be a problem with the Xbox One. So that's cool. They've got this content they're trying to put out on there, yeah. this custom stuff, and there's sound. There's some things that are very interested. I ain't gonna buy an Xbox One to yeah. watch it. No, none of this makes me actually want to go out and buy an Xbox One. I have no more desire to go out and buy an Xbox One than I did two months ago. Now you can get them on Xbox 360 too. So it's not like you can only get them on the Xbox One, but you can get oh, it there right. also. But the this may be. Think about the sales of the Xbox One up to date. And supposedly at this point, like the last quarter, the PS4 has sold like three times what the Xbox One has sold. Yeah, I didn't know it was three times, but I knew they were still ahead. Yeah, and it, and that's that's not retail sales, that's consumer sales. Because those are two different numbers. Like, you could sell as many as you want to a retailer, but if they're not reselling it, it doesn't really make a difference because they're not going to order anymore. Yeah. Those are actual consumer sales, though. And, you know, I read an article not too long ago that was actually saying that people were predicting that eventually the Xbox One was going to overtake the PS4. And they gave some reasons why. And I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm not saying it can't happen. But it, so far it looks like Sony's really kind of got a, a clenched fist around this one. Yeah, and I mean, they barely actually sold more um, Xbox Ones than Xbox 360s. Somebody was telling me, uh, I think it... It was this week. If you certain retailers, if you went and gate, you turned in a 360 or a PS uh, uh, three, you could get an Xbox One for four hundred dollars. And somebody pointed out, or you could keep your P- PS three, <laughs> Xbox three hundred and sixty, and just pay four hundred dollars for a PS four. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I think this is one of those things that Microsoft was like, oh, we're going to roll this out, and maybe we'll get some more people to buy it, but. I don't think gamers really care about these TV shows and things on there. I don't really think this is what's going to make a gamer buy this device. Once again, they're marketing to the wrong group. They're marketing to people who are concerned about a, a TV. I mean, their their idea is to expand their market to where not just gamers want the console. They want it to where gamers want the console and all these other people. Like, your mom also wants the cons- console. It's However, too expensive for that. I, I, it's too expensive, and I, and I also just think that by doing that, they're going to, and it's not going to be a lot, but they're going to scare some of their actual gamer audience away. You know, I don't, I don't want to. That's cool that my console can play Blu-rays. I don't want to watch TV through my console. I don't care. Yeah, 
Net, put Netflix on there? Sure. It's fine. I can do that. But I don't know. It's, it's like I said earlier, none of this actually made me any more excited to even consider buying an Xbox One. I mean, their hope is that what it's going to do is that these original programs are going to, you know, further push people to make the Xbox One their all-in-one entertainment device. And the reason they want that is because if you do all your entertainment through this, that means they control your living room, which means they control the ads, which means they can make more money on you and they can market to you the way they want. It's 1984 all over again. So, I mean, that that's what they want. I mean, they, they you know, years ago, they before the Xbox One was even announced, they patented... A technology for the that worked with the uh, Kinect that basically could tell, like facial, like yeah. if you were happy or sad or angry based on what was being played on the television. So that way they could market to you better because yeah. it was all for advertising reasons. And, and I remember reading about that. And you know what actually scared me more than that? The Kinect. If you had like a poster for Coca Cola in your room, mm-hmm. it could read the poster. And so they were like, oh, obviously we need to, you know, advertise more Coke products or advertise more whatever this person. I was like, my internet already tries to do that. Don't do not do that when I'm trying to game, too. You yeah. Know? Well, it, I mean, it is, it's bound to happen. It's, it's going to happen. But. Custom advertising in video games. I mean, yeah. that has happened. Yeah. I, I play the, um, the wrestling games, um, WWE 2K13, 14. And one thing I've noticed is... Um, you know, when they, they they try to make it look like a real wrestling program, in real wrestling programs, whenever you come back from commercial, you know, it's uh, tonight's episode of Raw is sponsored by Blah. And obviously, it's a good way to put in an advertisement. And I notice, like, sometimes my advertisements for certain ones will change to something that, you know, it's not necessarily something that's directly geared towards me, but you can tell it's geared towards the type of person. Mm-hmm. It's I don't know. It's like you said. It's it's already happening. It's just it's really it's interesting. It's interesting and it's a little scary. Yeah, and this is just Microsoft's way of wanting to make it work better for them so they can make more money. Because I mean that's all about advertising. Like if you're advertising something, and you know you're you're, you're pushing something to your customer base. Like I don't know. You're trying to sell Depends to all these video game players. You're probably not going to work too well because I'm the majority of video game players don't need the pins. Right. So you need to figure out how, what you do want to market to them. And so that's all of marketing is figuring out what's the best thing and what are the best ads to sell. Because otherwise, if, you know, the pins <laughs> bought ads and then they didn't see anybody buying it because of it, they're not going to give you any money in the future. Now, if you marketed a catheter so that I didn't have to stop playing Halo to get up and go piss, different story. It might I mean, work. The pens would work the same way. You just pee it's, in your diapers. It's so much. I don't know which which one's less of a cleanup. They the could give the you day. the Mountain Dew could mount could patent the new gamers uh, drink that came with the catheter, so you could just chug Mountain Dew and just never have to get up. Mountain Dew should take this a step further. They should make a drink for gamers that doesn't have to make you piss. Think that, about it. That's not really it, a drinking. It issue. hits that's your more stomach like and an evaporates. Thing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> Drink this, and it'll just evaporate everything inside of you. <laughs> oh, man. But Why so, do yeah, I have all this go. stomach acid? Uh. TV. That's That was what today's show is about, was television. And and I am not against television. <laughs> Obviously, I watch TV shows, but this just, like I said, it didn't do anything for me. And honestly, you know, I, I, know, I know you and I have had this discussion before, but, like, advertising stuff just sometimes when i realize they're trying too hard it makes me want an item even less yeah the best ads are ones that don't realize they're there so the opposite of facebook ads basically (laughs) yeah because they're so obnoxiously there that it makes me hate it makes me want to punch mark zuckerberg in the face i'm like god (laughs) mark i don't want this and i just want to punch you if i see you that's how angry i get you i guarantee you're not the only one all right, well, I guess that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Comics Controller. So if you want to email us any stories or questions or things you'd like to hear us talk about, you can send them to comicsandcontrollers at gmail.com, or you can post a comment in the YouTube video for it. Um, if you want to follow me, you can check me out on Twitter at ZombieJesus here. Where can they check you out, Stephen? At uh, Stephen, spelled correctly, Wilds on Twitter. So S-T-E-V-E-N, Wilds? That is, that is uh, completely inaccurate. No, it's... Uh... 
S T E P H E N W I L D S. And if you'd like to argue how to spell Stephen, you can contact him directly. The Bible sides with me. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's not get into this discussion. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So until next time, I'm Kyle, and I'm Stephen. Yeah,